Hello and welcome to Endzone Focus, I'm Davina William. Our program this week is about an extraordinary journey of reconciliation. It's been taking place in this country, Aotearoa, and is part of a worldwide ministry of forgiveness and reconciliation. The journey we're going to hear about originated in the UK when a group of Christians in that country sought forgiveness from Christians here for the wrongdoings by British colonials. The journey began with an historic reconciliation ceremony at Westminster Chapel in London. It was led by David Tidy from Prayer Warriors International, who had invited a group of Christians from New Zealand to attend. That event resulted in an invitation for the British prayer team to visit this country, and they've spent the last few weeks sharing their message of repentance with Maori throughout the North Island. Joining us in the studio to talk about this historic hikoi is David Tidy, along with one of the group who attended the London ceremony, Bradford Hami. They spoke with Mania Clark. Tēnā kōrua, Brad mm. and David. David, no mai, haere mai. Yeah. Ki Aotearoa, welcome to New Zealand. Thank you for joining me on the show today. Can I just open our time in a word of prayer? Yeah, sure. Dear Heavenly Father, you have a message for us all to hear today. So we ask that you would remember your word to us, that you would make it clear what it is you'd like to tell our hearts today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, David, you've had this message or this heart of reconciliation for a long time. Where did that come from? I believe it came from the Lord when I first got saved, where I was in a, a broken marriage. And uh, once I got touched by the Spirit of the Lord, He showed me that uh, I needed to reconcile with my wife and my family. And uh, within two or three months, uh, my wife got saved and the family was reconciled. And we celebrated our golden wedding last year of 50 years, the Lord in our marriage. So that started and then we, we was involved in a ministry house and some Kiwis came on holiday and they produced a envelope with some names and maps in and said, this is for when you go to New Zealand. And I thought, well, that sounds nice. But there was nothing happened uh, for at least 10 years. And then uh, 25 years uh, ago, I met a, a lady from uh, New Zealand at one of the intercessors, International Fellowship of Intercessors in the Philippines. We was on our way back from Australia uh, after doing some reconciliation with the Aboriginal was there and she said when are you coming to New Zealand and I said well when we get invited so last year the door opened again for us to come so uh, a friend of mine Martin Martin Smith and I we came in July to uh, meet with the Maori people because God had told us that he had given them custodianship of the land and that uh, we must come and listen to them. We've read a lot of books and things about this and you can have all the head knowledge but you need to be personal person each time to relate and hear what's on their hearts. So we came and uh, we listened and we was appalled at what we Brits had done when we first came. So we, we went back to uh, London to put on a conference there, a full day conference in Westminster where the decisions were made in Westminster Chapel. And there we drew together the national prayer leaders who came to that day and uh, they represented 45 to 50,000 intercessors um, and with others that agreed to be behind us who couldn't come, maybe 90,000 intercessors have been behind us coming. So it's like, uh, We've been sent out by the heart of the church in our nation. And there we repented before the Lord. And we asked uh, my friend Brad and uh, another brother from up north. And he came with uh, Cindy Ruakera. She was there with uh, three other uh, Kiwis that were living in, uh, in, in UK. And uh, they heard our repentant hearts and uh, there was a real time of reconciliation going on 
with the, with us there and before the Lord. So we felt that we needed to do that and for the church in UK to send us out. Mm. So only seven of us have come, but we represent quite a part of the body of Christ in UK. Mm. Brad, how did you become involved in it all? David did speak about it briefly, but tell I, us. I, uh, Joan Edmondson and a number of others, Sue Rowe, they've been involved in intercession in New Zealand for many, many years. And I've had an association with Joan. And uh, when this kaupapa come up, she came and approached me and said, Brad, will you get involved? And um, it's something... I suppose most Māori people who become Christian always have a heart for their land and their people. And then all of a sudden it comes up in front of you, what do you do? And I was a little bit suspicious. You know, most Māoris, what, what's this about? Mm. And uh, um, But in the end, I put my hand up and said, OK, if this is really of you, God, then, then let's make something happen. So I actually instigated an invite to, well, if these guys are serious, come. To New Zealand and, and uh, listen to us, and uh, that's how I got involved. Um, and the David and Martin came to New Zealand, and then I had to uh, put something in place to go and meet some people. So we went up north, and we called a meeting here with uh, Maori Christian people as much as we could to hear their message. And uh, at the end of the day, if there was an invite, it was agreed that we would uh, they, they would only come if there was an invite. And so there were a number of invites that came from different people. And so um, it was really my job, I suppose, or God had called me to usher the, these people into the land properly. So that's how I got involved. And you were invited by David to attend the reconciliation ceremony last month. Yeah. What happened? So we, yes, I was, uh, David had asked me to come to Westminster. Um, at the time I couldn't, I'd had no money or anything like that. and. Uh, I met Cindy Ruakere, who, who's a good friend of ours, but someone who's very prophetic. And she just happened to be in London at the same time this was happening. So I, I actually commissioned her to go instead of me because I couldn't see how I was going to get there. But in, in the end, um, my church and a number of people actually sponsored me and were able to come up with um, some funds for me to go. And so... Uh, Myself, uh, one of the Hayward Norman from Napui and uh, Cindy Ruakere were able to go to Westminster. And, uh, you know, many of our ancestors had been to Westminster, to England, to seek redress for old uh, grievances. And even Ratana did in his day. Uh, Wurumu Tamihana's family also had gone over, but there was absolutely no redress. Uh, and so we felt privileged to go. We weren't going by a via political means, we were going via the gate of uh, the church and uh, the spiritual gate. And so uh, when we went there, we, we weren't too sure what was going to happen. Uh, we stood in front of Westminster Chapel, uh, us Māori people, and people like John Dawson was there from, uh, uh, he's a Kiwi, who is the international CEO for YWAM. Uh, he was also involved in, in the international uh, a reconciliation organisation uh, and a couple of other important Kiwi people associated with Cindy. We sat in a cafe across the road and couldn't say a word. We just were tearful. What do we do? You know, what are we doing here? We're nobodies. We're not chiefs. We're not politicians. But we're people who God has chosen to come and do this particular role and hear their repentance to God of what had been imposed on our people. So we, we, we went there, sat there, heard their repentance, um, and David shared what, why uh, the English needed to repent. Uh, and uh, most of the people there, I would say, David, were quite ignorant of the history of New Zealand. Mm. Um, and we were asked to each get up and share a little bit. So we just shared out of our own hearts certain things that belong to our families to give revelation to the history. Um, and uh, out of that, there was a repentance. We forgave uh, them as forerunners, I suppose. Uh, and then we also uh, had a declaration that was written by a number of us to take to Westminster. Um, 
when the first time David came, uh, I'll speak for him, I suppose, is a, is a God kind of put it on, on his heart that uh, maybe there should be another declaration. Uh, there's the Treaty of Waitangi Declaration of Independence, but maybe God was asking for a spiritual declaration, but let's do it in the opposite way. When Māori people write it and we bring it to England. And so uh, we, uh, with a number of people that I know, Christian Māori people, we sat down and wrote a big declaration that basically said we, as Māori people, recognise our God-given right as custodians over this land. But we also recognise that we, as Indigenous people of the land, believe in God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. But our desire to have our lands healed and our people healed and to have true functioning families alive and well with the favour of God. That was our declaration, basically, that we uh, we presented to the English, they agreed with, and we signed it, and then we prayed it to God. So, David, you've been meeting with Māori uh, around the country, well, the North Island, sharing this message of what you've done. Where did you go, and how was it received? We went many different places uh, around the Bay of Islands there, and uh, we went to uh, to Russell, where we initiated the bringing of alcohol and, uh, and the uh, tobacco and prostitution. We went there to pray. Then we we went to uh, several different places, but we also went to Marsden's Cross, where the gospel was preached. We went to different battle sites where we needed to go and repent of where we had killed Mari. We went to different places where we had uh, taken land, confiscated land, etc., etc. And we, we had a very special time in just relating with the Mari people listening to their hearts and one of the things that we had from our time in London was uh, one of the leaders of the intercessory prayer movement in our nation had a, uh, a prophetic vision from the Lord that there was going to be like a milk substance spreading from the north right down over the, the whole of New Zealand and he had the word healing balm and uh, the first place that we stopped was Kawakawa, which is the, the name of the tree, is the, of healing that they use. And well, we didn't know, we didn't understand these things. It was just strange, that's just where we were stopping. So we felt that we had to go and lay an ax to the root of the wrong spirit that we brought when we came. The colonialism, the imperialism, the way that we applied what we were doing was to, like we have in other nations where we've been, we don't just go in to sort of trade with people, we go in to rule and to take over the rule Britannia bit, if you like. And uh, we came in and we started to dominate and to control, manipulate the Maori people. Okay, we brought the gospel and that was good. But we even, when we brought the gospel, we said, you know, we brought a, like a potted plant version of the gospel. And it said, uh, you know, this is the gospel. This is, you've got to do it the English way. And, um, you know, it, it wasn't as it should be that when God brings the gospel, he brings it into the culture and the language of the people, which we insisted, the way that you have it is wrong and you must do it the English way, you know. So we, we try and change cultures wherever we go to say, you must become English. You must be like Britain, you know. And there's just a sort of pride attitude behind that, that you must be like Brits. So we felt that we had to lay an ax to the root of that wrong spirit to come because we recognize if you don't deal with the root, the fruit will remain. And the, the fruit of it has been d division, and war, destruction. So we have been entering into spiritual warfare to help break that down what, since we've been here. David, Brad, there's still so much more for us to chat about, but for now, we'll just take a quick break. 
before the break we were talking about uh, your meeting with Māori around the North Island at these significant places where wrong had been done. Brad, you attended uh, with David at these hui. What was the feedback you received? Uh, the feedback, I, I would say people have been surprised, people have been overwhelmed, uh, people have had dreams and visions. There's a lot of discussion going on. There's a lot of freedom, I think, and a lot of expectation that God is moving in a greater way now than uh, was seen. People have waited for something to happen, and uh, we believe that amongst many other things, this is one thing that is helping push God into the space. And I was going to say a scripture um, from Isaiah 40, verse 3, where, you know, there's a call in the desert uh, to make the path straight, which is something we have to do. We have to go to these places and make right the bloodshed on the land, make right in repentance and forgiveness between each other. So what? So that God can come into the land. David, uh, lovely to hear you talk about uh, what happened when you were at these meetings with Māori. Is reconciliation important to God? I think he makes it very clear in 2 Corinthians 5.17 that uh, he says the old has passed away and the new has come and that we are new creatures in Christ. So in being born again, we have the desire to be reconciled to God and to relate with God. That's why the, the call is to be a spiritual person, to be able to relate to God. Without that, we don't really know and understand the spiritual powers behind it. So he says, uh, now that you're born again, I've given you the ministry of reconciliation. I've handed that over to you. And he makes it very clear that there is this life to live after reconciliation. So if I come to my brother Brad and say, I'm, I'm sorry for what we did, and he says, I forgive you, and then I don't ever talk to him again, that's not reconciliation. Because when we're reconciled to God, um, it, it's interesting fact that it's the offended one who invites you to come. You know, when, when God calls us to come and repent, there's always a time when the Holy Spirit draws a person to Christ that they come and uh, he invites them to repent. The forgiveness is already in his heart and all we need to do is repent of it. So it's the same situation here. Unless we was invited to come by the offended ones, it's pointless coming. So God was already moving here in reconciliation. He was already doing the work which we came into. And he's doing this all the way around the world, reconciling people to himself and to one another. And he says to us that uh, um, if, you have, if you have a problem with your brother, you even leave your gifts at the uh, altar and you go and get right with your brother before you come to me. So the ministry of reconciliation is a must as far as God is concerned. He makes it very clear that uh, it brings about a, a, a healing, but also it brings about a unity that's born of his spirit. And it's that unity of his spirit mm. working together. Do we see the change in the nation? And we have found when we have been in reconciliation with the Maori people in the Marae, that um, as soon as we had uh, come before them and they had forgiven us, then there was reaction from tribe to tribe were, you know, confessing their sins one for another and reconciliation was going on. And we, we saw pastors being reconciled within their own church of what's happened. So there is an anointing on this uh, reconciliation called by the Lord because we feel the Lord is coming again soon and he's preparing his bride and he's preparing his body for his coming. So he wants us to be right. So it's an urgent call and it's part of the call of God's purpose for this generation, I feel. And Brad, do you agree with what David was saying that there needs to be reconciliation on both sides and perhaps apologies on both sides? Um, and that how do we bring true reconciliation so that we are one as brothers and sisters? Yeah, I, I agree totally with David. I think both sides uh, 
There are even things tribally we have to go and deal with. Um, there are probably things we've already done in the past, but we do need to go and deal with things tribally between us and also with, with the British. And so uh, that has actually started to occur. And, uh, you know, it's an interesting thing that um, we went to a couple of places where the, the Māori people actually got on their knees before the British before these guys could get down and ask their, mm. their forgiveness first because they hold hatred towards the British. And, unless, and so we have to find a way to make our stony hearts into flesh. And, uh, and out of that, I've said to uh, David and them too, you can't just come and then never come back again. And uh, so we need to create long-term relationships. Amen. But through them coming, we also learn how to move amongst ourselves to seek reconciliation between families, uh, broken families, between fathers and sons, but between tribes that have fought each other for a long time. Mm. Uh, you know, because politics and politics and uh, through contracts and uh, social issues, we can obtain some form of reconciliation, but unless it's of the heart and the spirit, there's no, you know, uh, there's no healing, right. really. And so, Brad, when David and his team return back to the UK, what will you do to ensure that this message continues forward here in Aotearoa? Yeah, well, uh, I, I feel that uh, we as Māori people need to pull together on the intercessory prayer front uh, because we're kind of scattered everywhere. Everyone's in a church building with four walls. And we don't really know what the next crowd is doing or what each other are doing. So my, the the vision I feel in me is to keep links with these guys to learn, learn the the things that they have. God has taught them over many years, so that we can add that to our kete of knowledge as Maori intercessors, as New Zealand intercessors, but that we raise the Maori church up higher to be able to do warfare. Uh, everyone says, "Oh, Maori's are great warriors," and I said, "Well, yeah, we are, but we need to." fight on a different front now and, uh, and mobilise in a spiritual way. So that's my vision is to try and find a way to mobilise our people together so we all know who is doing what, what's happening, what needs to be prayed for as a real mobilised spiritual army. So how can we as a nation pray for this message going forward? We need a unity that's born of the Holy Spirit where the Word and the Spirit are together. When they are together, we stand firm together, we shall see mountains moved. We, we will see principalities and powers have to bow to the knee of God because there there will be a manifestation of the kingdom of God and we shall see great exploits done. Again, uh, mihi to you both. Thank you so much for joining me today. And so to close, how about I pray? Amen. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we've heard your message today and the message of reconciliation and the message of unity. We do pray that for us as a nation that your Holy Spirit will be poured upon us and that we will see the need to uh, work together and be reconciled with each other. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.